we need as engineers, of course, to have the intercultural competencies. And we also need to change our spec as engineers to include the teaching of ethics. I'm saying so because there has been a very huge gap in the way we do our professional practice. So today, I'm going to be speaking about the anti-corruption and anti-bribery standards, systems and strategies for optimizing the value of the projects that we do. Uh, I will look at the nature and extent of the practices and maybe explain some survey that we did for Zambia and Zimbabwe, cases of the Royal Academy of Engineering, and then go deeper into the costs of corruption. Corruption is not only an economic cost, it is a human cost. Corruption kills. I'm not sure how much of the building collapses are attributable to corruption, but many of them are. Again, we will look at smart technologies, especially in Industry 4.0, of how we can use those to deter, prevent, and avoid and minimize corruption. Again, what must we do as engineers? Uh, the problem is corruption is one of the greatest obstacles to the development of safe and adequate infrastructure. And you know, uh, project funds are diverted. Uh, it, it's very difficult to know who is doing the diversion, but mainly someone with, in a position of authority. But with the assistance of the funders, contractors, consultants, suppliers, and agents. So it's, very, it's a very, very complex issue. Again, the problem of corruption is across nations. And the most challenging thing is that uh, the impact of corruption is difficult to quantify because it happens in the dark by very powerful people with very serious consumment mechanisms. Consequently, uh, tackling corruption in the construction sector requires the uh, teamwork, like she said, collaboration, these soft skills, some skills that we do not, uh, and also mm -hmm. some comprehensive strategy and application of standards. Corruption is a management issue. You remember when these bridges, early bridges were built, dams and so on and so on, so many people used to die. And because of the quality systems, we all now know that zero harm is possible. Long back when Kariba Dam, bordering between Zimbabwe and Zambia was built, I think we lost over 100 people. On the new dams, zero harm is possible. So it's something that we need to think about. If we have standards in corruption, anti-corruption standards, we will be able to tackle the issue. The challenges are serious uh, effects, uh, which are not only economic. For instance, the poor or the developing countries are the hardest citizens, are the hardest hit by corruption because of the economic decline that it causes. And then these people are mainly reliant on the provision of public services by their governments and are least capable of, carry, uh, of paying the extra costs associated with bribery, fraud, and the misappropriation of the economic privileges. So corruption kills as it sabotages policies and programs that aim to reduce poverty. So it's very, very important that we have an effective anti-corruption management system uh, and, and look at how we could. As the World Federation, I chair the anti-corruption committee and we have made a resolution uh, at our last uh, meeting that the teaching of ethics should be made part of the spec of the engineering, which concurs with your, with your, your, your soft other skills that we need as engineers. Contract management as well. Those interpersonal skills are very, very important to make engineers more competitive and also be able to work with other teams. I'm happy about the confession from my colleague, Prof, about architects trying to take our work, managing us, because we have shown the gap. 
project management skills are so important if you are to accomplish your projects on time. So I will discuss uh, the project that we did uh, 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 briefly and then go into the fundamentals uh, of corruption and the standards and the technologies. Basically, corruption is defined differently in many regions. But the most comprehensive one during the study uh, was the one that is defined in Zambia, uh, from the study between Zimbabwe and, Z and Zambia. It's so comprehensive that it looks at, it criminalizes corruption. Some jurisdictions don't. It's like soliciting, accepting, obtaining, giving, promising, or offering of gratification by way of bribe, or other personal temptation or inducement, or the misuse or abuse of a public office or authority for private advantage or benefit through the same. Bribery, extortion, influence peddling, nepotism, fraud, rush trails, and electoral malpractices. It's in their law. So it, it's quite comprehensive. Uh, the UN Global Program Against Corruption defines as just the abuse of power for private gain. So that's the context. So corruption must be criminalized if it is to be reduced or minimized. Uh, we, we can also categorically from the research uh, state that corruption happens both in the developed and the developing world. There is the supply and the demand side of the corruption. It's like a coin. So if we are to deal with it, you see from the strategies and from the history, we need laws in both developing and developed countries so that you can find the uh, Foreign Practices Act did control a lot of that. If you commit a crime outside your jurisdiction and you come back to your, to your country, if you have paid a bribe, you will also be prosecuted. That drastically reduced the perception and also the amount of corrupt practices by foreign companies in developing countries. The context is that uh, infrastructure development needs to uh, embrace gains made in technology. Things like 3 to 6D uh, uh, printing, uh, the GIS visualizations for, 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 for all those other things, especially blockchain technology these days will radically, radically reduce uh, 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 corruption in terms of money laundering and some activities. Again, engineering professionals are the custodian of infrastructure, construction, and maintenance. And they must be trained and groomed, like she rightly said. So they must be ethical and must use up to date, uh, up to date with the rapidly changing environment. So these were some of the uh, findings that we thought were very, very interesting in, in the research. Uh, Corruption is also pervasive in developing countries because of weak institutions and the lack of effective checks and balances. So that, that's a, one area to address. Uh, with weak institutions, you, you then find that these things happen. And it is mainly the funds from the developed world, the development banks and donors that circulate in corrupt practices in the developing world or vice versa. So as an engineer in projects, you must be really uh, uh, understanding the impacts of the certificates that you will be signing. Is it value for money? Is it uh, 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 what you are signing for? Is there no corrupt or bribe going to some officials or, or yourself? So it is very, very important. In the methodology that we use, um, we looked at the existing pe corruption perception e e indice e indices, uh, the Transparency International one, which is a perception. Uh, it may also paint the wrong perception. We then looked at other, 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 other measures, like by the World Bank, by the development banks, and then we thought there is a gap. For infrastructure projects, I think we need uh, to be much more thorough than that. Uh, we need to look at, uh, uh, at the uh, construction life cycle and look at what activities may be prone to bribery, to corruption, and then address those uh, as we go. So we, we, we basically used the public investment management framework, uh, 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 which is basically an extension uh, of the theory of change. And, and it, it, it bears all the costs and all the values that you, you would find in 
in a project. Uh, we had about five, 460 uh, participants in, in, in Zambia in the pilot, uh, and all about uh, is it 300 in Zimbabwe. And the findings were such that uh, in Zambia, uh, they had a score of 67% in terms of the projects. Uh, uh, the 67% of the index indicated that most of the funds are lost uh, to corruption, which means basically for a country to be com compliant, it had to be over 80%. Out of about 300 uh, itemized uh, questions in the project life cycle. And, 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 and both Zimbabwe and Zambia were, were way, way, way below the standard that is acceptable. Zimbabwe was 53%, which is far worse than in, in Zambia. So these were very interesting results. We're just putting into context uh, uh, the perception of the construction industry in general. Uh, uh, fairly common, they thought it's, it's very common for Zambia. And then the existence of anti-corruption management systems, it was 71%. They are there, but they are not implemented, etc., etc. So the results, again, were computed in the systems. And then uh, the Zambia case, the, their score was 67%. Then Zimbabwe, the average was uh, uh, 53% uh, with, with the explanations of all the issues that we were looking uh, for. The conditions, for instance, Zimbabwe, the leading to corruption were uh, uh, sometimes military involvement, service provision, poor so social mobilization, government action, poor economy, a weak justice system, etc., etc. So those are some of the, the things that we learned in the study. So it, what was very interesting is all the professionals interviewed generally uh, said corruption is is harmful, it, it, it slows down economic development. Uh, and again, in Zimbabwe, we found out that uh, it, it was quite high, uh, although ways and means of reducing corruption were identified and there was a general lack of political will to implement them. That, that was one of the findings. Overly, the study was very, very interesting in such that uh, it was co collectively uh, uh, thought that it was wrong and damaging whatever corruption, in whatever form or size or shape. So that's very, very interesting. The recommendation obviously was that uh, we should uh, look at uh, uh, corporate financial institutions should insist on dealing with organizations that are compliant to the ISO 37001, I mean 37001, the anti-bribery management system standard. And that only that standard requires the genuine commitment of top management to reduce the corruption risk by curbing bribery, et cetera, et cetera. The other issue was also open contracting principles as well as public procurement based practices that could be, that could be used as well as benchmarking public procurement and, and e-procurement and the use of technology. So it's, it's very, very interesting that uh, during this study, uh, we, we then uh, looked at the extent of corruption um, in the developing world. Uh, of course, the same could, study could also be done in the developed world. Some of the features are common. So corruption generally occurs all over. And then the problem of uh, corruption within our cross nations is not a recent phenomenon. It is always, nor is it a developing world a problem. It has always existed. But however, uh, it, it exists in different forms and degrees and there's different consequences. So furthermore, within those countries falling within the category of developing countries ranging from the bigger, relatively well-developed countries, uh, such as Indonesia, to the smaller, poorly developed countries like e e Equatorial Guinea, we can also observe differences and patterns in the corruption practices. Like the study showed between Zambia and Zimbabwe. You can see neighbors, but different patterns. So when does the corruption okay? We further looked into that. The common assumption is uh, it, it is a tendering uh, phase of a project. Not really. It should be assumed that it can okay in any of all those project uh, uh, life cycle stages. Uh, so the general belief is that we should always be, as engineers, 
look at corrupt practices and design at the design phase. I can, uh, instance, uh, design a project and call that to tender and from there put cameras and everything. But the design spec is just to favor my friend, who is the only one that can produce that type of equipment that, that I've specified. Already we have rigged the project. And then we go on for public procurement, we go on to do all those things to the book. But already the corruption has taken place. So it's very, very important. It can also happen during funding, planning, design, tendering, which is where everybody's interested in. It becomes more feasible. But it, it, it's equally happening throughout all the phases. Again, why is a lot of corruption happening in construction? I think we said it all. It's complex. That's one, the project size, and the amount of money that goes into corruption. It is estimated that about 200 billion US dollars is lost to corruption in construction. Uh, this is by the, the World Bank. And generally, corruption is about 1.5 trillion US dollars per year. So you see the contribution of uh, construction is very huge. The, these figures can be confirmed. Uh, I think Pricewaterhouse, the World Bank, they are firing. It happens in the dark. It's difficult. All these projects were, were budgeted for. Uh, it's a project. Uh, um, it's a, this is a squatter camp in, in South Africa, but funds were stolen. And you find people and the society not having clean water and everything going on. So corruption really must be stopped. Uh, how should we do it? We need to have sustainable infra infrastructure. That's the best interest of the general public. So at least if you are not directly involved, you must do something. At least say something against it. You see, so that the world may be a safer place to be. Uh, previously, corruption economists were arguing that it's uh, that money circulates in the economy and uh, its economic activities, some tax will be paid. Those were silenced. That's about 20 years ago. They were silenced. It's not true uh, to say it's a necessary economic oil. It's not. And they have been proved wrong. So things have changed. Again, business people from developed countries uh, enforced stringent anti-corruption laws in their countries. And at that time, they would not do the same when they go to the developing world. That, again, is slowly changed. Most of them have now criminalized actions anywhere else in the world. Again, it, it was in the past inconceivable that a UK director would go to jail for a corrupt act committed, say, in Malawi, or that a UK company would be convicted and, and fined for overseas corruption. Now it's happening. So that, again, the supply side has been cut off. You know what happened. I've got a few cases uh, that, that I may just share with you. Again, this has changed the landscape. So corruption is damaging. That changed in the 90s. Uh, Evidence is we've seen collapsed building in the morning, uh, 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 earthquakes, massive, the, the Haiti issue. It, it's, it's, it's quite a, a plunder of public funds might have taken place, et cetera, et cetera. In construction, if the building's construction funds are diverted, it will be compromised in the quality and a lot of harm and damage will be will be done. So the costs are so many. Economic costs, human costs, people are dying. Uh, the five, estimate is that the World Bank says 5% of the global construction sector is about $200 billion lost. Uh, and, and generally, that's a lot of money. Uh, projects are compromised because of corruption. So there are now a lot of moves towards change. The OECD, uh, the USA began to advocate that other countries also adopt similar legislation uh, and the UK, the Foreign Practices Act and all those others. International treaties were also signed. This way to slow down uh, uh, corruption. There are also laws. Most countries have made uh, bribery and all those things have been criminalized. So it's very, very important uh, that uh, these laws can then work towards is slowing down uh, corruption. Prosecution has also taken place. You know, the Siemens issue, uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera, uh, the Alstom issue. 
where, where uh, the 42 million, where, where the, the Swiss uh, Alstom fine branch was signed for, fined 42 million by Swiss authorities. So this was the beginning. Uh, 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 the Bonny Island in Nigeria issue of Ali Beton Kellogg Brown. The CEO, I think, should be saving time up to now. Uh, so many things, you know, uh, KBR CEO uh, and, and all those other things. So a lot of cases, you know, they, they are so plenty. And this, again, will save uh, as a warning that any corrupt practice will lead to serious issues. Corruption need, can be managed. Uh, it's a management issue, like I said. So we really need to have ethical business uh, uh, practices and uh, confront the challenges that we face. Uh, you see that uh, the, the challenge is that uh, despite these considerable positive developments, there are still major corruption problems in many countries. You see? Avoiding corruption is both the right thing to do and a legal necessity. Again, the laws must be strengthened, strengthened, and failure to do so can result, obviously, in prosecution. Some of the new technologies that can assist in, in Industry 4 uh, are across the value chain, but block, block, uh, blockchain is quite interesting. Uh, big data analytics, uh, a lot of uh, uh, the Internet of Things where there's enough surveillance, enough uh, programming, authentication and fraud detection systems that you can use uh, to make sure that you have smart sensors and a lot of other things that can also be, be, be used. So there should be a, a paradigm shift in infrastructure development in our design systems that uh, build in, with ethics inbuilt uh, from our training, et cetera, et cetera. So it's very, very important that this technology could uh, assist us. The other issue is also for us to deal with the, uh, corruption, we must have a stakeholder approach. The, the bilateral donors, the export credit agencies, the national government, civil society, uh, the professional engineering institutions and other people should also develop a lot of strategies in their areas to combat uh, corruption. So these strategies, there are so many, you know, government's improvement plans must be required, anti-corruption uh, declarations, uh, and so on and so on, before any money can be lo loaned. So there are quite a suite of interventions uh, that can be done by governments themselves, anti-corruption tools, uh, that can put in place to ensure that uh, corruption is reduced. Uh, civil society, the media, uh, which is the fourth uh, 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 calling, this can reduce corruption drastically. As an engineer, the first test of any dilemma is what will your auntie say if you tell her I've done this? Is this right or wrong? That's the first test. And when you find yourself in the front page of a newspaper, then your professional reputation is damaged. So basically, a, a lot of companies and other people can come up with uh, uh, strategies. But we recommending quite a lot of things that we can do as professionals. Peer review is very important. Uh, establishment of councils of good governance and also legal reviews and CPD in terms of empowering ourselves with contract knowledge and also anti collection systems. So basically, uh, uh, corruption kills, uh, that, that's basically the uh, serious implication, and that we need to, as professional engineering organizations, enforce anti-corruption and anti-bribery systems and standards. So in order to optimize infrastructure funding, you need to ensure the good management practices are applied from start to finish of the project life cycle. And in project selection, design funding, and all through all that cycle. Then there must also be good systems and controls in place at the client, contractor, funder, and consultant and subconsultant level. And then these management systems, like the BS10500, which was converted to the ISO 37001, are very important tools. And infrastructure sector, we are particularly exposed to corrupt practice since they involve monopolies or quasi-monopolies of critical public services huge construction works and opportunities for concessions or privatizations, all of them possible sources of huge profits for corrupt people. Corruption has been identified as the greatest obstacle 
to our development. And these policies will help us. So I think our takeaway is that corruption kills and it should be fought from all levels. I thank you. Thank you.